So there's one more topic that we want to talk about in terms of the chemistry of alcohol, and that has to do with the use of protecting groups. Now, we've talked about uh, protecting groups in the context of the chemistry of aromatics, where we use uh, sulfonic acid to protect a position on an aromatic ring. So remember, a protecting group is something that gets put on, uh, chemistry happens elsewhere, and then you remove the protecting group. Um, and it turns out that in terms of functionality, alcohols um, are one of the most uh, widely uh, used groups in terms of uh, functionality in terms of protecting group use um, that there is in organic chemistry. Um, and that has to do with the fact that the hydroxyl group is relative re relatively reactive. Um, so as we've learned, it's acidic and it can also be oxidized. So there's uh, very many times when we want to avoid um, the, the chem that type of chemistry happening on a hydroxyl group um, when we're doing similar chemistry elsewhere in a molecule. So for example, um, imagine that I have the following molecule and for whatever reason I need to make a Grignard reagent um, out of that uh, alkyl bromide, right? So I, I would be trying to make this Grignard reagent, um, but of course this isn't possible, okay? And it's because that hydroxyl group is acidic, okay? So as soon as I might uh, form any of the Grignard reagent, it would immediately deprotonate that hydro hydroxyl group. And instead, what would happen here is I would be generating just that alkoxide, right? So I would, I would in fact, insert um, some of the magnesium, but then this is basically a carbanion, which would simply deprotonate itself, okay? So that's not going to work. So in, in this type of context, we need to protect the alcohol so that we can uh, do Grignard reactions or, or similar type of chemistry. Okay. And just to give you one more example in terms of oxidation. Um, so imagine that I had the following molecule. Okay. And so here we have a diol. So it's got two different alcohol functionality. Um, and, uh, you know, there might be reasons that I want to oxidize this alcohol and leave that one intact, or I want to oxidize this one and leave that one intact. Um, but the problem is, is that, um, to a first approximation, PCC, um, or, or many other oxidants don't have the selectivity we need here. Uh, now there probably is a selectivity and other reagents might give us, um, some selectivity, um, but in general, this isn't going to be something that we can achieve um, in a selective manner. Um, so, for example, if I was trying to get to this product, um, it's, it's probably not going to work because it's not selective. Okay? Um, and so what we really want to do is to um, instead figure out a way to protect this alcohol, oxidize that alcohol uh, to, the, to the ketone, and then deprotect or, or something like that. Okay, so this is why we need protecting groups for alcohols. So um, as always, there are many different uh, options for protecting an alcohol unit. Um, and there are entire books about protecting groups. We're only gonna deal with one class of alcohol protecting group. And in fact, I'm going to limit it, limit it in, in, to one protecting group um, entirely. Uh, but we can talk about uh, them in a general sense. So uh, this basically, the one we're going to learn about is the silo ethers. Okay, so if you're, uh, well, you, you, you might know already, uh, we're going to talk about it in the next unit. Um, an ether um, is sort of the, um, you know, we, we went from water to alcohol, uh, and then the next, the next step up is, a, is an ether where there's an oxygen, um, sp3 hybridized, um, that's attached to two different um, alkyl groups. A silyl ether is very similar, and this is just going to be uh, the same um, type of situation, except that one of the units, instead of being a carbon, is going to be um, a silicon. Okay, so it's an ether um, because of the oxygen is disubstituted, but it's uh, a silicon. So this is a silyl ether. Okay, and this actually turns out to be a very useful. Uh, protecting group because um, it's basically um, as most e most ethers are it's it's basically chemically inert 
um, under, uh, let's say, many conditions. Um, it, it obviously can't be under all conditions um, or else we wouldn't be able to remove it at the end of the day. Um, but for the most part, it's going to protect that uh, um, oxygen from doing um, a lot of chemistry that we wouldn't want it to do. So that's good. Um, but in addition to being chemically inert, it's also um, relatively easy to put on um, and equally important to take off. Okay. So if, if putting on a protecting group or taking off a protecting group are too hard, um, that is not going to be as useful as something that you can um, put on under simple conditions and then take off. So solid ethers pretty much fit the bill. Okay, so what are the specifics? Um, I've, I've just sort of generically drawn um, three substituents on the silicon, but what are those substituents? And it turns out that there's um, many different options uh, for these uh, substituents, and um, these actually give you um, tunability in the reactivity of the silo group. So you can make a, a silo group more reactive, more stable. Um, you can make it susceptible to different conditions like acid deprotection or base deprotection, what have you. Um, so I'll show you just a few um, that exist, some of the common ones. So uh, the, the simplest one here is where you just have three methyl groups. And so this is going to be called the trimethyl silo group, okay? And uh, uh, organic chemists love abbre abbreviations, so this is called the TMS group, right? So that's the abbreviation that we'll use. Now, TMS is great, um, very simple to put on and to take off, but it's actually, a lot of cases, it's too easy to take off, um, so it'll just fall off um, with even just a, a little bit of acid, um, and so that sometimes is a problem. Um, but it is um, incredibly useful and it's probably the most common. Um, and so the way that this works is that if you increase the steric size of the substituents on the silicon, uh, you can make it more stable. So here's one where we've got the tri, uh, we've got three ethyl groups on the silicon. So this is the triethyl silo and this is abbreviated as the test group. Okay, you can keep going. Um, so a very, very common um, derivative here is where you've got two methyls and then a terbutyl, right? So terbutyl is very big, and so this makes it even even uh, larger. And so these names keep expanding. So this is the terbutyl dimethyl silyl, okay? And this is uh, thankfully abbreviated as TBS. That's the TBS group. And this one is now bulky enough as, you know, much, much more stable than either of these. And, and it's a little bit harder to take off, but it is more stable. So you can do sort of more forcing chemistry when you've got this um, as a protecting group. And you can keep going. Uh, so you can have three isopropyl groups. So this is the tri, I'll, I'll stop writing out the names, but this is the tri isopropyl silo group. And this one is uh, abbreviated as TIPS. And then sort of the granddaddy of them all um, is the one where you have a tert-butyl and then two phenyl substituents. Uh, so this is the tert-butyl diphenyl silo, um, which then is abbreviated as the TBDPS. Uh, and this one is incredibly stable, in fact. So actually both TIPS and TBDPS are both very stable. Okay, so that looks like a lot to remember. Um, I, what we're gonna do here is, is actually limit ourselves to just one of these and we're just going to pick the TMS group. Okay, so recognize that in reality um, we're going to use the TMS group uh, to, to protect all alcohols, um, but um, you might just understand that uh, in many cases, for example, if we're protecting a primary alcohol, in reality um, the TMS group might not be stable enough to do what we're actually proposing to do, um, in which case all you would do again, in reality, is to go to one of these more stable silo groups. But um, since they all generally um, work the same, I, I don't want to complicate things. So we're just going to memorize and use the TMS group and, um, and use it as a surrogate for all silicon protecting groups. Okay. All right. So let's just very quickly talk about the details of, of how we do this. So remember, there's three different things we need out of a protecting group. We need to put it on, we need to use it, and then we need to take it off. 
So how do we actually uh, put it on? So this is this is the protection step. Okay, so uh, sal ethers are generally very easy to form. All you do is you take your alcohol and then you're going to use um, your um, your silicon protecting group, in this case our TMS group, um, as the, the silo chloride. Okay, so this is tri, uh, trimethyl silo chloride, um, and we would abbreviate this as TMS CL or TMS chloride. Right? That's how I would, I would refer to this usually as TMS chloride. Um, and this is very easy because all we have to do is to uh, react these two um, and then we just need some base to mop up the HCl that's going to be formed uh, out of this process. Okay, so there I go. Um, and just like that, you form that uh, oxygen silicon bond. And again, this would be abbreviated. Um, I, I would oftentimes write this as, as just the TMS group. Okay, so and it's just that simple. Um, and what is the mechanism here? Well, uh, it's actually very straightforward. So we've got our alcohol, um, and then we're going to have our silicon, and all we're going to do is is a nice simple um, SN2 uh, type of reaction on that silicon. Okay, so uh, basically a backside displacement. Okay, and then our byproduct here is uh, right. So we we've got the triethyl amine to mop up um, any acid. So um, sorry. Let me just um, yeah. specifically triethylamine in this case. We could use other bases. Um, that would be fine. Uh, but triethylamine is, uh, will suffice. Okay. So now you might ask, oh, all right, this looks like um, analogous to doing uh, backside displacement on a tert butyl chloride, which you know is not feasible, right? If you're going to react uh, there, you would want to do an SN1 reaction. So why can we do this on a silicon? Well, remember, silicon is second row. So those, those silicon to carbon bonds are, are much, much longer. So there's just simply room for a nucleophile to do backside attack on a, on a silicon chloride bond. And so that's why uh, these, these bonds form so easily. Uh, we can just do the, the simple chemistry. So it's very straightforward. This is very... Uh, rapid chemistry uh, works very well. Okay, so it's easy to put on. Um, what about taking it off? Equally important, uh, we have to be able to um, remove our group at the end of the day. And we need to do that under mild enough con conditions um, that we don't destroy the rest of the molecule that we're trying to build up. Okay, so how can we do that? Um, there's two general methods uh, that we can use. And again, I'm, I'm glossing over a lot of details um, in, that in reality you would you would have to worry about or or that you could uh, think about using. Um, but the one way that we can do is to simply use acid. So some aqueous acid um, is pretty much going to deprotect um, certainly a, a silicon a TMS group, uh, and many of the other uh, silicon groups are also going to be susceptible um, to acid uh, deprotection. So that works pretty well. And the other way we can do this is um, to use a reagent called TBAF. Okay, so what, what the heck is TBAF? Uh, TBAF is, um, stands for tetrabutyl ammonium fluoride. Okay, tetrabutyl ammonium fluoride. Um, and the key part here is the fluoride part. So fluoride will deprotect uh, silicon. So let me quickly just talk about each of these um, each of these mechanisms. Uh, what's happening there? So first, for the acid deprotection, um, how does that actually work? Well, uh, it's actually pretty uh, straightforward. So I'll abbreviate my silicon this way. So if I uh, throw a proton um, at a sol ether, um, what I can do is to protonate that oxygen. Right? It's the type of step that we are seeing again and again in these mechanisms. So that gives me my oxonium ion, positively charged oxygen. Um, and now at this point, point, point uh, right, I've got some water floating around. At this point, um, that, that silicon um, would be just, just quite happy to exchange with another oxygen. So um, water can actually come in and uh, basically pick off that silicon uh, to now give me my 
my alcohol. And then you're going to end up um, at the end of the day with a, a, a silyl alcohol or a silanol as they're called. Okay. So that's a, that's a pretty straightforward reaction. So it's very simple, uh, acid, uh, acid catalyzed, um, deprotection. And then in terms of the, um, the fluoride one, so the fluoride, um, uh, I, I oftentimes like to call this the bazooka of silicon deprotection because um, it, fluoride will will uh, absolutely rip off um, nearly any uh, silo group ex except maybe in the most extreme circumstances. Um, and this has to do with the fact that the silicon fluoride bond is extremely strong. Um, and so this is a, a very uh, favorable reaction. And basically what you're doing in this case is the, the silicon, uh, sorry, the fluoride attacks the silicon and directly displaces the, the oxygen. So it just, it absolutely rips off um, the, the silicon, right? And so we get to our, our silo fluoride again, very, very, very stable. Um, and we're left with an our alkoxide. And then um, at the end of the day, we're going to work this up with some um, proton and get to our ROH. So this is just a, a workup step, okay? So that's that's how the, the uh, uh, si uh, uh, the use of fluoride um, lets us desilate. And so let, let me just finish this up by saying that what is the tetrabutyl ammonium? Well, this is just a big greasy counter ion to the fluoride. Fluoride, sodium fluoride, for example, isn't going to be so soluble in an organic solvent where our substrate will be soluble. And so we just need a big greasy counter ion to make the fluoride soluble. That's basically all that's happening there. Okay, so two different ways to deprotect uh, the silicon group. Um, let's now uh, let's now just quickly see this in action, uh, so we can see how we might think about using uh, protecting group. Okay.